Welcome back to the Three Months of Modal Logics, a sequel to the 100 Days of Logic here with Cardinates.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series on epistemic logic, looking at the question, what is logical omniscience? Well, logical, or logic, deal says dealing with the truths of logic, and omniscience is all-knowing. So just from the basic words right here, we can guess that logical omniscience is knowing all the truths of logic, which is going to be correct. If you are logically omniscient, you know all the truths of logic, or you're able to use all the truths of logic to correctly conclude all of the right conclusions or consequence of all of your beliefs or piece of knowledge. So, we've encountered the problem of logical omniscience twice before, once when discussing Bayesian epistemology and once when discussing the semantics of epistemic logic earlier in this series. The problem, basically, is that certain axioms or definitions imply that we know or believe all logical truths. This is problematic, since knowing or believing an infinite number of propositions is quite difficult, especially when some of those propositions are quite long, complicated, or even controversial. The point is that there are certain axioms or definitions that require us to believe all logical truths when it seems that we are unable to, or simply do not. If you've been paying careful attention, you'll notice that while there have been isomorphically similar versions of many of the axioms that we've seen in our other types of modal logics, we have yet to see a version of the necessitation rule. This is because such a rule would be an explicit statement of the requirement of logical omniscience. Let's take a look. So the doxastic necessitation axiom and the epistemic necessitation axiom basically say that if P is a truth of logic, or if you can prove from the system P, then you believe that P, or you know that P. This is not the only axiom that's going to imply some kind of logical omniscience. As previously noted, Hintika semantics and Bayesian epistemology can imply logical omniscience. In the rest of this video, we're going to explore the types of logical omniscience that are implied by various axioms. So a big problem for this is going to be axiom K. Axiom K implies a kind of logical omniscience, since it implies that one must know or believe all of the logical consequences of one's knowledge or beliefs. This doesn't necessarily mean that you know or believe all logical truths, but it does mean that based on anything that you do believe, you must know the consequences of that. And so, if you could, for example, deduce something from nothing, you would be able to deduce all of the logical truths. If you could deduce a logical truth from nothing, a logical axiom from nothing. Or, you at least must be able to know or believe all of the consequences of your beliefs, all of the logical consequences of them, including things that are very counterintuitive, because the laws of logic aren't the most intuitive. But axiom K is probably going to be one of the stronger requirements of logical omniscience for these systems. So if you don't think that it's possible that we have logical omniscience, or you don't think that we know at least all of the consequences of our beliefs or knowledge, then you might want to get rid of axiom K. Because even with implicit beliefs, where you perhaps know or believe things that are quickly or easily deducible from your beliefs, it doesn't seem that that's what this is saying. This is saying that you know all consequences of your beliefs or knowledge, even if those beliefs or knowledge are not quickly deducible, but rather do take a long time to arrive at. Axiom D is going to be kind of a weaker version of this logical omniscience. It implies that you don't believe or know contradictions. As I said, there's a weaker kind of logical knowledge than the other axioms, but it still may be too much to bear, because it seems that people often do believe contradictory things, despite axioms to the contrary. People often believe things that are contradictory, and as noted when we were objecting to Antica semantics, it seems that people disagree with things like the law of non-contradiction, which means that they do believe things that are contradictory, or they believe that there's at least something out there that is both P and not P. It seems that axiom D, while weaker, may have its own problems. 
Axiom 4 makes it necessary that you know or believe that you know or believe anything that you know or believe. Hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, look at my video on Axiom 4. Also relatively weak in terms of the logical requirements of belief and knowledge, but if you're worried about things like the KK regress, this is still going to be a problem. There is a debate as to whether these problems can be accounted for by implicit beliefs or beliefs that be, can be concluded quickly from existing beliefs. And while this might work for logical belief and knowledge required by Axiom 4, maybe, because we're just kind of adding I know that I know, I know that I know that I know, I know that I know that I know that I know, and so on and so forth, many logical truths seem to not be very available or very easy to arrive at quickly. And even with Axiom 4, it seems hard to wrap your head around a statement that contains 100 or 200 know that you knows or believe that you believes. You don't really, aren't really able to wrap your head around that statement and understand what it means. Up next, we're going to be looking at Moore's Paradox and looking at Moore's Paradox Revisited. I'd highly suggest you check out my earlier video on Moore's Paradox before continuing further. Watch this video and more here at Carnades.org and watch a new video every single day for three months. Stay skeptical, everybody.